Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to my podcast. I am your host, Dori, the hero, Patches, Uzab. If you didn't know, I got all those four names. And yes, oops, <laughs> yes, everything uh, is going well around here. And yeah, why not just make another episode and talk about topics that are difficult for us to talk or that, that we don't really um, love mentioned. Today we're going to talk about breaking the curse now. So um, I'm really um, really close to this topic because can I say that last year, exactly around this date last year, I was in a very terrible situation. I was in a miserable situation. I have mentioned it at the beginning of the first episode. I was extremely broke and desperate. I didn't see what was coming before. I, did, I, I could not see a future. All the little projects I had tried to do, my little adventures in the west of the country had really come uh, almost, with almost uh, just a few acquisitions and almost really no big fruition. Congo was uh, in a conflict with Rwanda, so uh, all the things we, we were trying to, to do with Congo uh, and uh, the projects we were trying to move to Congo because of the, the very difficult restrictions in the country were not working because now there was a huge hostility between the two countries. So yes, these topics really hit hits home and I hope this gives encouragement and uh, a sense of, of you know, uh, it will get better. It will get better. So, yes, and now uh, fast forward um, to April 2023. I could say everything changed from then on with just an email, as I've mentioned. And yes, um, first of all, uh, going to Germany helped me to basically validate my way of thinking. I had a hard time fitting in here because I I harbor unorthodox thoughts. There are areas in which my mind is open to, but that is not socially acceptable or socially conceived as as, 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 as acceptable because there is this thing uh, in us that is like never even think or never even dream like that. Or uh, there is a mold which you have to feed. And I admire, as much as I admire society that has uh, moral ethics that are so, so high and demands that are so high over a society that has absolutely nothing going for it basically is extremely um, unfocused and full of empty empty uh, slots as much as I like that I, I also don't like to be completely restricted and completely uh, repressed and uh, that, that conundrum within me that, that conflict within me was always prevalent and I, I was thinking that I could validate my social status based on how people conceived me because it's the, the way they do it in those types of societies that, anyway by well, going to to Europe and traveling just showed me number one that the law of attraction works so basically the things that you think go with you and align with your spirit are the things that are going to happen to you if you just keep believing in them number two uh, it's also that it validated the fact that i i am not a recluse there is a place for everyone and that everybody has an importance as much as we need people that are conservative we need also people that are progressive progressive rather so as much as we need uh males and males are part building societies and uh, and updating everything and shaking things here and there we need also females to be part of the game it also goes the other way around i i i, I don't agree that um uh, i don't agree that <laughs> The world doesn't need men, <laughs> dear God. What a mistake it is um, to to have this uh, culture that is just basically constantly disvalidating men, especially in the West. You might not agree with me. You might disagree with me. I just think the world is well balanced when all those two energies are intermingling. So, yes. So coming back to the curse, I 
I consider it a very sensitive to topic and it's probably also sensitive for so many people. Um, I've, 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 I've had friends call me and, and, and tell me that they resonate with my message, that is the best comment, the best compliment I could get, by the way. That they resonate with my message, that they're going through uh, through a lot of uh, hurdles, they are they are almost uncertain of what's coming forward, they don't see their, the future right there, or they're going through a breakup, or they're going through a, a huge transition, or they are completely confused about the next move, etc, etc, or they're going through depression, or they are basically stuck in the past. I got so many friends that are really, really, really stuck in the past, that I wish maybe would would look slightly more forward and, and maybe uh, or just cool the thoughts down because you have to uh, be able to, to befriend your demons in a certain way. So yes, so we're going to talk about, first of all, um, let me just go through the list of things we're going to talk about. It's already six minutes in, but there's no problem. We, we talk about patterns of behavior, uh, the thing I call um, patterns of poor behavior, basically a poor person's mindset. And a poor person is not a poor person for me is not uh, poor financially, is a poor mindset. They have a poor mindset. They think they are a hated. They think they don't. Basically, it's a very um, apprehensive and, and, and confrontational front they put to save their ego most of the time or to save themselves from being hurt. Second, we talk about the trauma bond and the way familiarity makes us not process information right. The, uh, we, third, we talk about the I don't deserve the best complex. This is something I've struggled <clears throat> sorry, with and it's, it's led me to, to, to deal with people that give me the same energy, basically that show me that I'm a piece of crap and I had to really confront it. I'm still confronting it. I'm still valuing myself and working on it. So number four, we talk about noticing problems for what they really, really are. If you want to really get rid of a problem, you get to its bottom core. We go on with deciding your pathway needs to be different. And then we go through micro habits. We go through self-re-education as a remedy to self-sabotage. This is so good. Again, if you don't think you deserve something good, when something good comes, you say you're a piece of crap. Uh, so so my mother said this about me or my friends say this about me or or my colleagues say this about me so I'm not that good enough for this opportunity so or sometimes it's not even about people that say it sometimes you just feel like it because maybe it's been something you've told yourself and nobody has really talked to you about it and you just you have you have assumed you are you are irrelevant or you are inadequate We've talked about it also in a few episodes before. So, and uh, the other point we're going to talk about is surrounding yourself with people that want to be the, want the best for you. This is so, so, so important. And I recommend people reading 12 Rules for Life. It's one of the greatest books um, of modern times, at least in the last five years, I could say. <laughs> if there is a book that has really made a huge impact on, on lots of people that have read it, it's one of them. I really do dig many of the things uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson mentions, whether you, you like him on the media platforms or where they have a skewed view about him, there is no denying that his words are truth. So, and I end up with, with a funny, funny quote from the Japanese that say, falling down seven times and rising up eight. So let's go through that. Whew. Let's talk about the patterns of behavior. So there's this thing in, psych, uh, in psychology and also in neurobiology that uh, goes around these lines that uh, the things you have been indoctrinated to or you have heard many, many times, it takes your brain slower time to process them. So let me give a very easy, easy example. Um, religion, for instance. If you grew up in a Christian family, whether you're Christian or not, the word of the Lord has been told to you many, many times the rules and the, 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 the dictates of the Bible have been told to you many, many times. So what happens to your brain is that the brain, when it hears something the first time, it has time to react. And, sorry, when some, something is controversial, they don't agree with it, then it could easily react. After I hear it 
very many many times the brain no longer needs to process that information so basically whether you want it or not you grew up in a christian household and you're struggling maybe to uh, break things down rationally it's because basically your brain has not uh, takes it as is and doesn't actually process that information and that the basically decode the truth or or something maybe you need to, to debate with you so to get to a point you could really why do i say this there's a friend who talked about three things there is um thesis there's antithesis and there's synthesis so thesis is a statement let's say um happy are the poor for the kingdom of god belongs to them right you have to be able if you want to really be convinced of course uh this is now this is uh, for those who are interested in really going deep down to the truth because this is what i value a lot you have to break down the truth and get what works and test the other things that don't work until you really get the truth that is universally confinable with you uh compatible with you your truth how does your value system get this okay so there's this is there's a statement happy are the poor for all the kingdom of the lord is belongs to them so now you could start by thinking okay who are the poor people so is it the beggar i'm seeing on the streets is it um, this guy who's saying he needs a, he needs shelter yet he could actually pay for his own house or is a poor person this guy who is used to 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 tell us he has problems when he actually could solve them this lazy guy who could really have a good time uh, really could have rather invest his time with his family and drinks all and, and drinks all them uh, drinks his heart out and doesn't go to his family and now the next day asks for money is that a poor person no then who's the poor person in the kingdom of god maybe let's say okay poor person in the kingdom of god what is a poor person have to do with the poor person in the kingdom of god this is a person who decides for instance to deprive to deprive himself from things that might make him feel superior etc 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 so there we go so with patterns of behavior we have to realize that in order to break a few patterns we are used to for instance maybe we grew in a family in which alcohol is the thing that the, the social glue basically and you want to get out of alcohol you have to be able to break it down and since you have been surrounded by people who drink alcohol it will be harder for you so be ready for that so we're talking about breaking the curse so if you want to break the curse of alcohol from your family or the curse of basically um impulsive behaviors with with women for instance there are families that are extremely promiscuous for instance and you grow up those rumors they end up becoming part of you and you don't really need to judge anymore because it's like your uncle did it your brother did it your sister did it so why uh, it's normal <laughs> so yes you have to be ready for that so now, it takes us straight to the trauma bond now the trauma bond is a psychological concept in which basically people look for people that remind them of their uh their past basically so for instance you grew up in a family in which you are psychologically neglected right maybe um and it is interesting because it also depends on the child some people deal with neglect in a different way they they, they close off completely some other people deal with neglect by by basically uh internalizing it and 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 and, and thinking like maybe it's it's them the other problem simple um, we are in a very transitional country so the economy is transitioning to uh trying to become a middle income economy there's going to be a lot of struggle and so there's going to be a lot of family issues with in terms of availability of parents for instance there's going to be lots of problems with finances there's going to be lots of conflicts there's going to be lots of divorces there's going to be lots of uh, nagging and 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 and, and and since our society is not even educated about communication about um uh, they don't know about we still have like traditional uh ways of thinking and maybe it doesn't cover up for all the problems we're having right now because uh 
in the past things were conventional it's slightly better the, the, the resources were available it is it is it is so people could really have a starting point comparatively and so the problems of this society are so underrated to the point that you don't think you have problems yet you really have tons and tons of them you work longer hours etc you don't have time for your kids and that all of that creates a lot of trauma so a very good example is complete neglect so if you process neglect as a child maybe as the parents not loving you or not you're not worthy of love you're going to very likely look for a partner that reminds you of that environment same if you grow in a family that is loving and is uh, together and takes time and tell each other the truth you'll be looking for a partner or friends or environments that remind you of that place so and the fact that you love that environment doesn't mean actually you really love it it's rather a sign of familiarity so basically i don't know why i always go to bad boys why do you think so <laughs> Uh, bad boys are attractive, maybe they're interesting, they're exciting, but what about this? <laughs> maybe it reminds you of, of your father who was not really there. And he said he, said he loved you, but uh, he, uh, if you break it down, again, thesis, antithesis and synthesis. So you break it, why we break it down, you just realize actually he was just there for the big events and he could come and give you a, an occasional hug after three months of absence and say, oh, that's love, that's love, that's love. So if the guy basically completely ghosts you and, and neglects you and, 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 and lets yourself run away with all kinds of things and thoughts because he, he cannot talk to you and communicate when you're starting to raise your voice, <laughs> that what does it mean? Uh, it reminds you, you of the situation you were in. It's like for you, the way you lived with your father, and that because you know their, their parent must love you, they don't hate you certainly. So you interpret it as love and then you go sabotage your life with the wrong people. So after you realize maybe that's a problem, this is called a trauma bond now. So that situation is called a trauma bond and we have to be aware of that and realize how could we get our emotions out of the way and just use numbers i guess try to be a bit more uh, logical with it and break things down and then realize the truth so you have it's up to you to do it it takes us to the i don't deserve it complex so there are people who have uh, uh complex i've told you there are different ways to deal with trauma some people deal with trauma as as basically shutting themselves down and most of those, m most of those are slightly a bit more. Uh, they look cooler with problems. They look slightly more stoic, and they could. They looks like they can handle anything. They are strong, and but but they are actually processing information terribly. <laughs> in the in the end, they're human beings, so they will have to deal with that thing, one way or another, or its consequences rather. So the I don't deserve the best complex is a an example of shutting down of that it's like okay so this is the way i've been raised it must have been a problem i must have had an issue so yeah the, then if my parents treated me like this or or if my classmates treated me like this then it must be true you know i don't deserve good opportunities this happens especially also for people who come from really tough backgrounds basically Everything from the childhood, okay, everything is, is, is an exaggeration. If you break it down, you realize it's not everything. It's just the way you see it, you want to feel that it's everything because of the narrative, right? So we, we, we talk about the self-made businessmen who really have been able to sell $500,000 a month. Yesterday, we were talking about some of them. But the ways they thought about everything was completely skewed uh, because... They are still in a confrontation mode. They don't really adapt to the status they have changed. They still have maladaptive behavior. They, t they still treat people like, as if they're enemies and crap. Or they, 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 just basically, they just basically keep dropping people out there. They keep uh, dodging the law because that's how they had to adapt. That, that's how they had to adapt with, within a society that was full of people like them or people who are even worse 
or desperate. So uh, if you come from the from 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 the streets or if you come from a very difficult background and everything has uh, again, as you said, has gone against your will, you will develop habits of basically saying, uh, "Hmm, if it's something good, it's not good. It's too good to be true. <laughs> I don't deserve this." So then get away, go, baton. So let's think about that for a while and notice our problems or what they really, really are. Give them the real names and, uh, and yeah, then we become better people. So yeah, now comes to a point in which we have to decide our pathway and how it needs to be different from the negative pathways. It's good to have uh, to grow from a good family. It's good, uh, basically healthy family in which uh, things are um, are clear this or that way. You could ask a certain question maybe, and it it's, it gets a, a conclusive answer in some way. Then you could process things. But this is a scenario that probably happens. Let's let, let's be like optimistic, ten <laughs> percent of the time. Both of us. Um, most of us want to have good families. We want to create good families, but we end up finding ourselves in chaos because the world is not predictable, because sometimes wars happen, uh, you know, crises happen, and we cannot deal with it. And we create pain, certainly. And sometimes we even create pain when we don't even want to create pain. We just maybe want to help the child and just realize the child is not adapted to that way. It takes them years to, to process that and go to a good conclusion, but they still have residual trauma, whether they have actually a conclusive answer to that. So how do we go? Uh, number one is we, we have to decide that the, 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 now that we have named the problem, now that we have seen what the, pro the problem for what it really is, start to decide to go through a different journey. Make very harsh and, and drastic decisions sometimes to really get out of the habit Again, I could refer you back to episode six, in which you have to start setting out um, resolutions. You start deciding on what goals now to go with and be realistic and humble about it. And uh, not extremely uh, get down on yourself because the tyrant you hate from maybe your parenthood or your situation is going to be yourself now when you're starting to really judge yourself extremely harshly. So you have to evo avoid to be the tyrant in your own story, to be the, the dictator in your own story. Yes, so yeah, it does start with micro habits and it starts with uh, deciding, okay, uh, after breaking this issue down, after breaking this relationship down, and it's very difficult. For instance, I, I have had to process relationships, this is, this is now very hard. I've had to process and break down relationships with my parents. I had to do it from 12 years old because things could not be easy sometimes. So, and uh, I had to really find, about at 12 years old, I was not able to even process, <laughs> even process food. <laughs> this is a joke. Sorry, I have not been. I was not even able to process um, being um, bullied, extremely bullied um, back in the day when I was at school. But uh, anyway, um, now that I have grown up a bit, I have had to process all of that to make peace with it. So I had to process uh, my family situation. I had to process uh, my brother. I had to process my sister. I had to process my dad. Bless his memory. I had to process my mom. I had to process the other family and other families. I had to process all the dynamics here and there and start making peace with them. I had to process new additions to the family. I had to process all of that. And I'm still processing that. But the objective of processing that is really, number one, giving yourself the truth. The truth has no color. The fact has no color. The fact that somebody died on the 28th of October is a fact, right? Now, the way you felt about it might be different, but it's a fact. This event happened. 
this event happened. The way I thought about it is this way, but let me see, try see the event from the perspective, the other perspective that I did not see. Let me be, try to see the event from the perspective of my brother. Try to see the event from the perspective of my mother now. Try to see the event from the perspective of mine at that time without an idea about maybe uh, situations and other things. So now you have to have, make peace with your past. So this is the big, the big objective. Make a lot of peace with your past. Accept yourself, accept the mistakes, accept everyone, accept everybody. Everybody, everybody in general, except maybe sociopaths and psychopaths, they want society to be good. They want things to, to be good. They want to be nice people. Nobody wants to be considered as a bad person. Maybe the way they go about it, depending on the way they go about it and also the, the results that get out of it might induce judgment sometimes and you have to realize that maybe the intention was good and start from there and if after you realize the intentions were good then try and process the person the way the person thinks the patterns of the person just realize oh yes i understand now from this perspective person's perspective having gone through this and that and that and that and that having been a genocide survival, this and that and that and that and that, or maybe having done part of the genocide, they had to process a lot of things. Because we have, we have a big thing, a big event that has created this chaos. For instance, the genocide is a big event that could mark lots of memories and uh, create lots of tensions in complex situations that require you that don't give you time to, to process and that don't give you time to even think about. You have to do things in the moment, right? This is an event that we could start with. Imagine this person who was living a normal life, had friends, had a very abundant family, being betrayed by their best friend or being betrayed by their wife. They share a bed together. They gave birth to five children. How will that person feel if you told them all they have done is worthless? They will go into a frenzy. And this is just an understatement. They will be extremely triggered. Maybe they would feel betrayed again. It will take them back to, to a dark place. And because those emotions were raw and they had no time to process them, maybe they will make a crazier reaction than normal. And that reaction is going to be the cause of pain. And now there, you could reconcile with them. You could reconcile with their thoughts. It's even harder if the person is dead. Actually, you know, it's funny. It's probably easier if the person is dead. Because we tend to idealize dead people. But if the person is alive, you have to even talk to them. Or see them working every day. And sometimes see patterns reoccur. And say, hmm, take a breath. Take a breath. Calm down. It's just them trying to do good things and often being misunderstood or often doing it not the right way or often maybe doing the best they can, they know how to do. You have to also realize people are not the same. They don't do things the same way. As, as much as you want th things to happen to you, with you, you even don't accomplish them yourself the way you wanted them to get accomplished. What about the other person? So. What this does is make you an empathetic person. So let's go with, uh, let's go with other few points with self-re-education. Now you have to start re-educating yourself. Now that you realize there is a lack in your life. Maybe there is a lack of affection. Maybe there is a lack of mental stimulation. Maybe some people think they are surrounded by people that are not their level of intellect, that they cannot have a conversation with. So they are forced to lie to them or to omit information to them. That's a very depressive place to be if you are, if you value intellectual conversations, for instance, if you value intellectual stimulation, maybe find a place where you will get intellectually stimulated so that you can live in harmony with that society without needing them to be what they are not. Find friends that maybe reflect that way of thinking. Yeah, who do the hard work. Some of them, 80% of the time, will not be able to match with your needs 20% of the time 
20% of the time they might match your needs, maybe 1% of the time they will be better friends, they will be good friends for you, but also you will have to figure it out with time. So all of this is really tricky to, to navigate. You have to realize that life is supposed to be hard, but you can make it harder if you don't make an effort. That's for sure. You can make it more meaningful, yet hard, but yet more meaningful if you make an effort. So surround yourself with people that want the best for you. Make good friends, uh, develop good habits, aim high, keep doing your best. Pray if you can. <laughs> yes, I said that. <laughs> yes, uh, because I had to process prayer also myself. Yeah, the, for me, it's important to have re to reconcile every tru the truth that uh, is common. Basically, I question things and come up with better conclusions, hopefully. So pray if you can. Yeah, keep 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 people that are valuable close enough. Keep them around if you can, right? Give them your time, important. Give them your time. If your child uh, takes the stress away from you, uh, tell them you appreciate them. At least that will be, be a good way to start because you could say they know. <laughs> they probably know, but they need to be reminded. And that makes a huge difference when you meet them 20 years later and they say, I remember the day you told me you loved me, right? This is important because we're having all these difficult, difficult times. We've gone through wars, we've gone through a, a huge crisis. The country is in a declared war with Congo, Rwanda, I mean. And there is wars everywhere and uh, the media is full of crazy... Yeah, it, the media is crazy, it's going crazy, things are going berserk. So you might say the, the world is going around. There is AI. So many people are losing their jobs or are going to be losing their jobs, especially in the West. So that also scares uh, many people be, regarding the future. So there is going to be a lot of more crisis. So you got to hold on to the people close to you and, uh, and uh, develop a very rich world and a beautiful relationship with yourself. So yeah, fall down seven times, rise up eight. Thank you very, very much. It was Pachi Suzev, your host. This is Podding with Myself. Ciao, ciao.